In today's episode, two homegrown entrepreneurs share with us how they keep their businesses afloat. Take on home weights exercises with Fiona Fussy, and Yasmin Cheng checks out a family-run satay stall with a cheerful Machi at the helm. Hello everyone. Once again, thank you for staying home together with me, Hosan Leong. You know, ever since COVID-19 has proven to be more than just a virus that could rule and even ruin our lives across all sectors, saving jobs as well as businesses have become paramount. Financial assistance schemes have been made available to businesses as well as salaried workers. And the Job Support Scheme, or JSS, has been implemented and enhanced to help all of us tide through this very challenging period. My two guests for today uh, have businesses that have managed to stay afloat throughout this pandemic. So let's say hello to Q Menswear's uh, Chong Han San as well as Jason Lee from Artisanal Fragrance Label 6. Hello, gentlemen. Hi, Hi Jose. Han San, your business deals with um, menswear, bespoke tailoring. Um, yes. Throughout this whole period, what happened to the customer base? Did it, did it decrease? During the circuit breaker, we totally cannot um, receive any customers at all because it's a very physical one-to-one uh, -one business. So there was nothing we can do for our customized uh, business. Mm -hmm. But we have a little bit of uh, ready-made uh, products that we actually pivoted to do it online. And we did uh, quite good sales during the period for our online business. We actually managed to monetize our inventory wow. during this period of time. Yeah, brought in some cash for us to uh, survive through. Yeah, that's great to hear. <laughs> so, Jason, because you are selling in the business of selling fragrances, how do we do this online? Because we have no idea what we are getting, right? How do you market this? During this period, uh, like uh, Q's men, menswear and many other businesses, we were not allowed to, uh, to, to open our retail outlets. Mm -hmm. As such, we courier uh, the scents uh, that are, they are not in the market uh, yet, not launched yet. And this allows us to be able to offer them to customers, to allow them to experience our creations in mm. the most convenient and safe manner. How are sales okay? The online sales uh, have been good mm. and um, we also see a shift from uh, perfumes, uh, particularly uh, body perfumes to uh, home scents mm. because many people are actually working from home. So people actually find this essential to have a good mood lifting scent to perk up the day and to increase their efficiency when they work or when they learn at home. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to hear because I keep telling <laughs> yeah. people, right? Stay home doesn't mean you stay smelly or don't look good, you know? <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> okay, what about the other schemes that um, have been implemented or, or meted out? Uh, for example, training. Uh, Jason, have you sent any of your staff for training and all that stuff? Yes, of course. I think with this new change in business model, mm. I uh, feel that this is uh, particularly important for everyone in the team to be well equipped and uh, to upskill themselves and to make themselves uh, relevant mm. in terms of uh, how to manage uh, the new omni-channel business model that is uh, uh, relevant for, for the times now. What about yourself, Hansan, mm. your training? In February this year, when we see the COVID-19 happening in China, right, our sales were also getting a bit slower during that period. So I pre my staff, hey guys, since you're quite free now, you know, go and look out for some costs to attend. You know, government is encouraging us to do that. So, uh, all my staff took up some courses mm. and one of the popular courses is of course doing uh, e-commerce as well. Right. And yeah, she did She did the course and immediately she volunteered to revamp my whole website. <laughs> <laughs> which, which, which helped a lot during that period. You both run, are running Singaporean brands which, which I think are world class, you know. Um, what are your thoughts on Singaporeans, you know, thinking, oh, it's Singaporean, therefore, you know, maybe it's not as good quality-wise. Time to time to state your case, <laughs> Hansan. For us, in fact, uh, we went to we expanded to Shanghai, China, mm -hmm. uh, in two zero one eight. Within the first entry, we actually have uh, three stores in Shanghai, China. Everybody who bought our product, they love us. They say so good, so mm -hmm. better, much better, and well priced than the local Shanghainese brands. But of course. Uh, we came in, we went in small um, and we're going to compete with the big boys. 
in the end, we didn't really succeed. But mm. the feedback really got there with the our product and quality and pricing and design. Everything mm. was fantastic. Mm. So, any plans to try again or go somewhere else? Of course. <laughs> it was a very expensive lesson. Yeah. We have to <laughs> learn it. And we're coming back to Singapore to regroup ourselves mm. and planning for the next one. Okay, that's good. Uh, yes. What about yourself, Jason? Last year, I had a plan to uh, explore the market in Korea. Mm. So when I went over there to explore the market over there, uh, I feel that there's a lot more that uh, us as a brand that we have to work on before we can really, you know, uh, step into a new territory like Korea. Mm. Because uh, I think over there, the customers are willing to pay 150% but they do also expect you to deliver two hundred percent. Wow! So I, I think uh, we have a lot to work on, and I really want to make Singapore proud when yeah. we step over overseas. Now, twenty twenty is where we are. You no, know, midway through already. So, what exciting plans do you have? Have you all made big plans for the rest of the year, Hansan? Yes. So one of the things that we did uh, during this uh, circuit breaker was we actually changed our online website, right? from something you can buy ready make goods to something you can actually customize your shirts, suits and pants. Because we have a lot of customers from like Australia, uh, Europe mm. who wants to order things from us but they can't come to Singapore. Mm. So we have an online catalog that will be perfect for them. Mm. They've been asking for it. Oh, good. <laughs> so it's a good opportunity that we actually did it now. And Jason, exciting things for SIX coming up? Yes, of course. So we have engaged uh, an external agency to or consultancy to help us in crafting uh, the next smart AR AI inspired uh, omni-channel retail ecosystem. And we have plans to also go into live streaming, live shopping as well. So all this uh, will come together and to form a very uh, uh, holistic uh, experience for customers. Wow, that's, that's amazing to hear. So, you know, uh, on that note, <laughs> gentlemen, I uh, want to thank you both for joining us on Home Together and all the best in your businesses as well. And stay safe, keep well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jose. Stay with us after the break because it's time to grab some water bottles. Fiona Fussi will teach us how to use them to build muscle. You can use any set of weights. If not, you can just use a set of water bottles. You'll never stray too far from Welcome back. Working out from home can be simple and fuss-free, and you can still attain your fitness goals even if you don't use any sort of equipment. But if you are into strength training, which helps build muscle endurance, you may want to get yourself some free weights such as dumbbells or barbells or resistance bands. Let's join Fiona Fussi as she shows you how you can get fit and strong from the comforts of your home by using some form of simple home weights. Hi there, I'm Fiona Fusi, and this is a home workout that I like to do with home weights. You can use any set of weights. If you have heavy ones, that's awesome. If not, you can just use a set of water bottles. So first thing, we're gonna warm up with our home weights. Do slow and steady arm circles. This is just to get our upper body warmed up, our shoulders, chest, back, Circle your arms slowly and steadily. Backwards and forwards. This is so we warm up our upper body, chest, shoulders, for the rest of our exercises. After warming up our upper body, now let's warm up our lower body with squats. Don't go too fast. just so that we warm up our legs, our whole body. Make sure your knee doesn't come 90 degree in front of your toes. All right, last few. All right, now that we're all warmed up, let's start with our exercise. Reverse lunge with side raise. Alternate your lunge with a side raise. Repeat them on the other side. This should be a fluid yet dynamic movement. 
you're working your lower body as well as your upper body. Make sure your knee doesn't touch the floor. When you raise your weights to the side, you're using your shoulders. When you lunge backwards, you're engaging your butt and your thighs. I feel my heart rate starting to come up. Last few. All right, give your body a bit of a shake. And let's do the next exercise. Squats with an overhead press. For these squats, try to sit back lower than you did before. Make sure your core is tight and your back is flat. We're using our shoulders again. So we really get that nice toned arms and shoulders, especially when we wear our tank tops. I like to work my shoulders a lot so that I get that nice toned arms. If you have heavier weights, use them. If you don't have weights, that's okay too. You can just follow the movement. And time. Next one, lunge, hold, tricep kickbacks. We're holding our lunge, 90 degree angle in our knee, and our elbows should stay close to our bodies. Don't swing or rock your body. You're isolating your triceps here. Make sure your elbows stay high. Look at your triceps, they should be working right now. Last few, and we're gonna switch over. Woo, and other side. Same thing, reverse lunge. Make sure 90 degree angle in your knee and extend. Our triceps are on blast. Really engage them, we're almost done. Contract your abs while you do this. Full body exercise. It's the last few. Keep your form good. Abs, core tight. Woo! Shake your shoulders out. That one was tough. Last exercise, sumo squats with bicep curl. Step your legs a little bit wider than shoulder width. Come down into a sumo squat. Your inner thighs are working and extend for a bicep curl and press up. Try to sit low in your sumo squat. Another full body exercise because we're engaging our legs and our arms as well as our core. Keep your core tight the whole time. Your abs are working. Make sure your form is right. Curl using your biceps, look forward. Last one. Awesome job. Whew. You should be feeling your full body after that workout. Try to do at least two or three more rounds. I hope you enjoyed this. See you soon. Welcome back. It's lunchtime once again and you may be at a loss on where to go for makan and what to eat. Leave that to Yasmin Cheng as she has the reputation of being a true blue foodie. Join Yasmin on a food escapade as she checks out a satay stall run by a chetty matriarch and her family at Adam Road Food Centre. Hello, hello, hello! It's me, your foodie friend, and I'm back again. It's Yasmin here. Now, I like to see myself as a carnivore or a metasaurus. And if you're like me, the minute I say satay, I bet you your eyes will go ding! Now, the origins of satay can actually be traced back all the way to the early 1900s, where the Arab traders came to Southeast Asia because of the spice trade. And with them, they brought the kebabs. Now, the big difference between then and now is back then, they used to use the thin, dried stem of the coconut leaves, and today, we use wooden or bamboo sticks. 
Now, a search for the satay has brought me here to Adam Road Food Centre. The satay is in there. It is calling out to me. I must go. Hello, hello, Madam Zaiton. Yes. Yay! With me, I've got Madam Zaiton of Zaiton Sate. So, Madam Zaiton, how long have you had this store? Uh, Seventeen years. Seventeen years. Yeah. Before that, before that, I'm the work workers here. Ah. Yeah. Then you took over the store. Yes. Ah. Okay. So for your sate, what time do you start preparing it? Seven a.m. Seven a.m. Yes. And then how long does it take to marinate the meat? Uh, around three hours. So I understand that you sell three types of sate. Yes. Chicken, mutton, and beef. And I think mutton is the best seller, right? Yes. Ah, so if you want to eat mutton, you've got to come in early, okay? So people are telling me that your satay sauce is really served up. What makes it so unique? Because all the ingredients we do ourselves. Ah. Ah. The uh, chilli paste is the dried chilli. Ah. We boil and then we blend. We put a lot of ingredients like ah. garlic, ginger, lemongrass, vinegar, cumin, Coriander and dark brown sugar. Ah, ah they are all we grind. Then you have to marinate, lah. So this is Madame Zaiton's personal secret recipe, ah. Yes. Now on top of uh, satay, I understand that you also serve other foods. Yeah, I offer every day is nasi sambal goreng, mm -hmm. fried on... lontong with chicken rendang and satay. Ah, kampung porridge and the popiah. Mm -hmm. Black pepper popia mm -hmm. and biryani popia. Ah. I also have laksa. And the favorite is this, this is, you know one? Kentang ball. Oh, potato meat ball, yeah. Ah. And there's also one dish that sells out very fast, correct? Yeah, that one is curry puff. I sell around 10 o'clock. 12 o'clock, you cannot get it. Oh, so if you want to eat Madame Zaiton's yeah. curry puff, you better come here before 12 o'clock. Okay, so Madame Zaiton, I understand that you've decided to adopt e payment as well. Yes. What made you decide to do so? Because my son told me, Better use the e-payment. Ah. It's easy for me. Ah. Ah, then I said, I'll try it. It's very good. You like it? it? Yeah. Okay. Now, we're here for the satay. Madam Zaiton, can I have some sticks to try? Yeah, no problem. Okay, we're going to let you go and grill. And in the meantime, we're going to have a little chat with the digital ambassadors. I found them! The digital ambassadors. Here I've got Danish and Victoria. Hi, guys. Hi. Okay, share with us what made you decide to become a digital ambassador. For me, I actually love uh, helping elderly about uh, technologies because I myself have my grandma at home mm. to understand technology better and also it's better in this current situation. Very filial. Uh. How about you, Victoria? For me, it's that I love interacting with many people from different backgrounds and also I feel that this is a brand new experience where we are actually engaging with hawkers who are way older than us. This is different from my past job experiences where it's targeted to the younger people and families. Okay, I love that. What has been the best part of your job so far, Danish? It's actually interacting with the hawkers because like I said, I love to yeah, educate people, especially the elderly. So when I get to educate them, help them with Actually, digital actually make me happy. Lah. You know, I can't see his face, even with the mask on, but I can tell he's smiling all the way. You're a very happy person, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Victoria, what has been the most challenging part of your job? I think the most challenging part is that because we are way younger than them, so whenever we go up to them, they are also busy and they do not want to like entertain us. So we have to go back at a, at a certain timing when they are free to know how to get their attention to be on us. Yeah. Right, so patience is key. So, do you find it harder to approach the more elderly hawkers? I think it is more difficult because many of them are intimidated by how technology is evolving and they are not really used to all these changes. So, how do you convince them to come on board? We actually go around telling the hawkers the benefits of the e-payment, like how during COVID-19, e-payment will actually help to lessen the physical interaction between the customers and the hawkers. So, Dan, as you've spoken to many, many hawkers, on average, what is the percentage of digital competencies of the hawkers? It's actually around 70% of them are interested because actually, in this current situation, a lot of them want to go on cashless mode because it's, I think, safer for them and for their customers also. Mm, it's good that so many hawkers are so interested. I'm not going to take out any more of your time, so go forth and bring okay. them on board! <laughs> Madam Zaiton, I pay ready. Okay. Yay! Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very thank much. You, thank you. 
It's time to makani makan. First, mask off. Ah. Now, unfortunately, we came a little bit late, so no more mutton satay. <laughs> But I do have the chicken and the beef. It comes with, of course, the ketupat as well as the cucumber, raw onions, and that satay sauce. Gonna tuck into the chicken one first. Look at that. I love it when it's got a bit of char. That's what a good satay must have. Some of that blackened bits, right? It's glistening. It looks very juicy. All right, you gotta dip it into the satay gravy. Ooh, it's very thick. You can tell the minute I dip it in, I'm like, ooh, there's lots of chunks of peanuts. You can see that in there. Mmm. Ooh. The satay gravy here is actually quite spicy and I love it. Not quite as sweet as some satay sauces that you have outside. So it's more spicy than sweet. But it's good. You can taste the peanut chunks and the meat is very tender. Nice. Alrighty, time to check out the beef. Hello, Mumu. See again, there's this wonderful chow over there. We dip in the satay sauce. Do you know that some people actually eat satay without the satay sauce? I'm like, where are you from? It's like eating ice kacang without the ice or ice kacang without the kacang, you know what I mean? You've got to eat it together. Mm. I got the slight crispy part because of the char. Delicious. So dark. Can we try the ketupat? Mm. The ketupat is very nice and soft and moist and not dry. You know how some ketupat sometimes are so dry and so hard? You know it's been left out there for so long. Not this one. Mm. I'm not even a, a fan of carbs, but I will eat this ketupat. At 70 cents a stick, this is good, good sake. And what I really love about it is the sauce. It's spicy. It leaves more than a little tingle on your tongue. Now, they're closed on Mondays and they open from Tuesdays to Sundays from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. So come on by. Say hi to Madam Zaiton of Zaiton Sate right here at Adam Road Food Center. I'm gonna continue eating, huh? Mm. Digitalization is the way to go. Not only does it help us get connected with our loved ones and people at practically every corner of the world, it can also help businesses to thrive and in turn keep their workers employed and create jobs. I'm Hosan Leong. Take care, and I'll see you once again on Home Together. Cause home is never